Man has used a horse to help in all manner of ways for thousands of years. Carrying on that tradition is Toby Hode, a woodsman who lives in the county of Dorset on the southern edge of England. He provides a wide range of woodland managing services, including felling trees, extracting wood and selling it on. And his logging horses are central to his work. I like to use horses mainly because of the impacts on the woodland floor. We can be working in a job in the middle of winter and um, you'd, you'd know we'd been there because we'd sort of lightly scarified the woodland floor, I guess, but you don't get the compaction and the ruts that you get through heavy machinery. Walk on, Effie. Walk on. Don't get me wrong, there's totally a place for machinery and forestry, but on a smaller scale with what we do, low impact, sensitive sites, it, it, it just works perfectly, it just fits the bill. I think the awareness of using horses in forestry is increasing as well. Whoa, good girl. Well done, I see, good girl. Yeah, we use voice aids, um, mainly because I don't want to be using, pulling on their mouths all day, to be honest. In time, they, they learn what the basic ones are, which is, you know, whoa, walk on, come over, get away, steady. That's quite a popular one <laughs> um, when they're keen. Right, back, my love. Back, Etty, back. Back, come on love, back. Back one more. Oh, that's fine. Good girl, well done. Anything about the wild garlic this time of year is the leaves when it's had a little bit of rain, but um, it gets really slippery under fur. So you've just got to be really careful with that a little bit. Bye then, Nettie. Get away and step on. Walk on, walk on. Good girl. Steady, sweetheart. There we go, good girl. Well done. Steady, good girl. So this bit of kit is called a um, Scandinavian arch and it's absolutely brilliant. I reckon probably I use it 80% of the time. Um, what it does is that some of this timber is going to be milled up, for example, so it wants to be kept clean. So it lifts the timber off the ground, for one, and keeps it clean, as I say. The other thing is it takes a bit of weight off for the horses so that um, there's not so much friction on the ground, pulling back on the horses. Up, up, come on down. I got into using horses mainly because I didn't have the capital to buy a tractor to begin with. And then I realised there's such a market for low impact forestry in the UK. So yeah, it, it's, it's, the business has grown from strength to strength, to be honest. Whoa. Good girl, well done. So obviously minimises on the impact on the woodland floor. You can see a day like today, we've got bluebells, wild garlic. This is a small example. You've got some woodlands that are triple SI, so they don't want machinery on there. You've got very steep woodlands as well, um, where you physically probably might not be able to use machinery on there. And also you've got wet woodlands. So combine all those together, it's definitely a place for, for horses working in forestry. The horses that I use are, are called a comtois and they're a French breed bred predominantly in France for forestry and vineyard work. Short, stocky breed, which is what we're sort of after. I just find that the, this, this breed fits perfectly for, for what I'm doing. You have to treat them like an athlete, to be honest with you. Um, you can see they're quite well muscled. Um, so it means a lot of food. When they're resting, they don't get much food. They get hay and they've got their grazing in their field at rest. When they're working, it's a totally different scenario. So we go out on a job and we'll feed them in the morning and we'll feed them in the evening as well. When they're not working, they have access to hay and water the whole time. They normally work for one and a half hours to two hour shifts and then we swap them over depending on the work. If it's heavy work, it can just be an hour and then we just swap them over and they'll do that through the day. They might do three shifts each probably in one day, but I'm working all the shifts. <laughs> It's harder probably for my wife because I go away and that, you know, as I say, I have to go away on a block of time to actually all the jobs don't land in, in Dorset. So I, I travel for the work, which is fine. But the kids, the kids are fantastic. And if I have a local job, they always come out and see me, which is really nice. Uh, where they bring a picnic or, or a flask of tea or something, which is uh, lovely. But yeah, they're really supportive. They're, they're fantastic. And the kids are getting to an age where they're starting to sort of understand it a little bit more, which is really nice. They love obviously sitting on the horses and then spending time with them. I absolutely adore my job. I absolutely adore it. Um, 
I've been in a job where I haven't enjoyed it quite so much and I left that job and that makes me appreciate what I do even more, to be honest with you. Working outside, working with like-minded people as well, it's amazing. And then obviously you then throw the horses into the mix. People can look at it and sort of look at it through tinted glasses a little bit. It's, it's physically hard, especially during those winter months when it's cold and it's wet. You know, daylight today, it's lovely. Obviously it's all sun's out, bluebells. It looks idyllic to be honest, but you know, you can be working in a, a woodland, driving rain, mud, it's slippery, it's dangerous. The horses have really got to be listening really intently to what you're saying and what you're doing, because it's so dangerous at times. But yeah, that, that feeling at the end of the day when you sort of hang up the harness and you know, you go back to the lorry and you cook yourself a meal and you're finally warm and dry, it's, it's worth it, it's nice.